Inside her Henderson apartment, Clara Smith is transported through distant memories. My husband and I, before we were married. The 98-year-old widow looking back at old photos of another time. And this is our old farmhouse that we lived in. She was born in Colorado in November of 1917, an age when women were still fighting for the right to vote. My mother was a mother of three daughters before she ever got to vote. So for Clara's entire life, it would take an act of mother nature to keep her from voting. Voted in every election since I was old enough to vote, except one, and that was because of a large snowstorm. This great-great-grandmother has waited decades for the chance to vote for a woman for president. I'm hoping that we will see our first lady in the White House. Clara hoping this is the year she'll see the highest glass ceiling shattered. Well, I think women uh, are just as good in politics as men. Her family taking her on a short drive to the nearest early polling site. I'll be 99 next month. A quick signature and she files into the voting booth. I'm not sure I know how to work well, these. With a little help, she's ready to go. I would say vote the way you feel. Right in there. Clara taking her place in history with the promise she'll keep voting. There you go. As long as she can. I, I'll be here four years from now. We'll be here in four years and meet you then. All right. I'll keep that. We'll make that a date. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, where you grew up, and how you ended up here. I'm from Colorado, from the southeastern part of Colorado. I lived there until I was in my early 80s, and then about nine years after my husband passed away, I moved to Denver for about three or four years, and then out here. Okay. And uh, big family? I had two sisters, one older and one younger. I was the middle child. And kids, grandkids? I have two sons, five grandchildren, 10 great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren. Okay. So tell us what you're going to do today. Well, after I finish here, I plan on going and voting. And who are you voting for? Hillary. Can you tell us why? Yes, I'm a dedicated Democrat, and I vote my party. And, and you said that you've, how, how many elections have you voted in? I mean, I, I've, been, I've um, voted in every election since I was old enough to vote except one, and that was because of a large snowstorm, and we weren't able to get to the polls. And uh, you, you were telling me how deep the snow was. Well, they said it, it was three and a half feet on the level. Three and a half feet, wow. That's the one time you didn't get to vote. That's right. Okay. Um, and as far as the... Um, getting to vote for Hillary today. This is the first time in all those times that you get to vote for a woman. Yes. For president. How does that feel for you? Well, very, I like it. And I'm hoping that we will see our first lady in the White House as president. And what's that, I guess, what, what does it feel like today knowing, I mean, you've waited so long for that opportunity to get to vote for a woman. It really, it, it doesn't seem any different in the other election, except I just realized she will be the first lady that ever has gone to the White House. But she's not there yet. We need every vote. So it's very important that people get out and vote 
for both votes do count. Do you remember the first time you voted? Well, that's been so long ago, I, I really don't know. But I, I think the first time that I voted was when I was 21. At that time, I don't think we could vote until we were 21. And uh, and, um, and it's kind of interesting because you were born at a time whenever the idea of women even voting, it was a relatively new idea. Yes, my mother was a mother of three daughters before she ever got to vote. Uh, when were you born? I was born in 1917. So we will turn, January the 1st, we'll turn 2017. Wow. And, and how old are you today? Well, I'm really 98, but I'll be 99 the 21st day of November, which is only a few, maybe three weeks away, wow. if that long. <laughs> so I just say I'm 99. Close enough, right? Yes. And, and so tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up uh, as a young woman in your time. Um, what, what did you do? Uh, I understand that you you went to beauty school, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I didn't go to beauty school until my boys were grown. Mm -hmm. And I believe um, the couple here were married when I went. Um, we'd always lived on a little farm outside of town and my husband railroaded all the time. So that was up to my two little boys and myself to take care of the farm. And believe me, they did help. And you're, you're a dedicated Democrat, you said. That yes. You vote every election that you can except for once. Uh, where did you get that kind of dedication? Well, my mother was a Republican and my father was a Democrat. They never argued about their politics. They just went to the polls together did their voting and that was it. But I just, I guess, decided that I'd rather be a Democrat. And you stuck with it through, through the years. Yes. Although I was a registered Republican for many, many years because when I registered, to vote. My father-in-law was a dedicated Republican and my husband didn't think we should displease him by registering as a Democrat. So we, we registered as a Republican and then voted as we pleased. <laughs> That's great. And um, to know, I mean, you have several grandchildren, great-grandchildren, uh, to, to know that they, they could possibly be growing up in a world where it, it's not, um, sorry about that, um, it, where it's not a far-fetched idea to think of a woman president. I mean, they could be growing up in a, in a world where it's pretty common. Yes. What's it like to, to know that that, that is in the future? That's wonderful. Can you tell us why? Why do you think that's wonderful? Well, I think women uh, are just as good in politics as men. I've, I've watched so many of the women speak and talk, and they're great. And, and we've seen the, the rights of, of women kind of progress. Um, you must have seen it through your lifetime. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what's it like living today as a woman versus 
what, what you experienced when you were young? Well, when I was young, we went through the Great Depression, and then we were unfortunate enough that we were in the Dust Bowl. So we had to go through the Dust Bowl. And then out of the Dust Bowl into the war. So I've seen some hard times. And today, the young people don't know anything about those type of times. Any words of wisdom for, for the younger people? people out there who may be heading to the polls, what would you tell them with all of your life's experiences and, and, and what they should keep in mind when going to vote? Well, vote your, I would say vote the way you feel. Whether it's Democrat or Republican, they should get out and vote. That's their right. And it's a privilege that many, many people don't have in other countries. And we have that here. And they should, every one of them, go vote. That's eligible. And uh, as far as uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton goes, um, you said that you really liked her. Um, can you, when, when did you know that you really liked to support her um, for president? Well, I liked her. Well, ever since her husband was president. I thought he was a great president. He may have not done everything he should have correctly, but he was a good president. And uh, she was a good senator. And I think she was a very good s secretary of state, as far as I can tell. And I know she seems to have a lot of baggage but it's just like with the other candidate. Some is correct and some isn't. Yep, and so by the time your birthday rolls around, you'll, ne you'll definitely know who, uh, who president will be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes we will. Perfect. Is there anything else you would like to add as far as, I mean, this is a pretty historic time for, for women in our country to be able to cast this ballot for a, a top ticket woman on the ballot. Um, is, is there anything that you'd like to say just about what, what is it like to be part of history like that? Well, it just feels great that I'm still able mentally to take part. Maybe not physically always, but mentally. I feel like I could hold my own with any 99-year-old person. <laughs> and it feels great to be able to know that I can choose the one I want and uh, do the voting myself. Perfect. Do you have any questions? If, if Hillary Ren wins, how are you going to celebrate? Are you going to have some champagne or a beer or some, <laughs> some, some, some steak? How, how, how are you going to celebrate it? Well, I'll probably sit here and watch the TV by myself. I usually do every year. And oh, if she wins, I'll hoop and haul and clap. And <laughs> but I'll be by myself. <laughs> What do you hope she, I mean, if, if she becomes president, what's something that you'd like to see her do right away? What's something you think that need, need, need to be fixed within the first 100 days of her being in office? I really hadn't thought about it. There's so many things that does need to be fixed. But um, I think one of the first things she needs to look at is Obamacare. And um, I'm sure she has some great ideas on how to improve it and to make it better. And I don't feel that it should be abolished. I feel that it should yeah. stay in effect. Mm -hmm. Only it does need to be corrected and worked over. Mm -hmm. A little improvement. Mm -hmm. Improved. And if Trump, if Trump were to win somehow, would he have, would you have would he have your respect and your well wishes? Absolutely. 
the majority rules in this country. And if he wins, he will be my president. But you're hoping for Hillary. Well, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that would be good. Um, 